Today I'm joined by Andrew Ma from Jans. Andrew, welcome back to Gearbox. G'day, Jimmy. Very light. VLX has a baby brother. They do. So a lot of people out there be film, be, would be familiar with the VLX, the big brother of this guy here, which is the VLX3. Uh, the VLX, the larger one, has been out for around about oh, 12 to 18 months now. Yep. It's been doing a lot of production work uh, here and around the world. So this is the new version, um, which... I suppose the shorthand here is that it's while the three sevenths, it is. It's three sevenths of a VLX. Okay, same chipset. Same chipset. Same sort of output yep. from those chips. Yep. And there, that's an RGBW one twenty watt chipset. Yeah. It is. It is. So what you've got is it's a quite unusual LED source. It's a one hundred and twenty watt red, green, blue, white chipset. Each one's around about the size of your thumbnail. So what you've got is an one hundred and twenty watt, as, as as Jimmy said. So one, each one of those sits at the base of the fixture, at the bottom of a sort of a, a collimating structure, which allows it to mix the light. Then it goes out through the lens at the front. Now, lenses, lensing on this, this is um, a little bit different in the way that the zoom mechanism works. It is. Uh, VLX3 is a 15 through 55, okay. uh, whereas the, the large one is a 20 through 60. So they're both around about a 3 to 1. Okay, so a little bit narrower, but still um, the wide on this is... Was really nice. We were yeah. looking at it earlier. I think this would go really nicely, sort of at side of stage. Sure. Um, as a wash. Um, indeed, uh, the color temperature wise, it's uh, it's got quite a wide range on that too. Yeah, it's a uh, three thousand degrees Kelvin through nine thousand, so it goes pretty high. So you can match it to just about anything in terms yeah. of wide output. Yep. Um, in terms of things that are not wide yep. output, because let's face it, that's what the RGB part mm -hmm. of the chip does. Um, You've got quite a good array of colours available, and, and the blue on this seems quite a, little, quite a lot more sort of saturated than, than some of the others we've seen. Yeah, um, it's uh, a slightly more indigo, I suppose, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, is the way to describe it there. Um, really nice colour rendering on this guy, um, similar to the VLX. So you've got a really nice colour reproduction across sets, across skin tones, across uh, wardrobe and all that sort of thing. So you should be able to keep your your wardrobe and your makeup departments and all those various Relatively people. Relatively happy. Yeah, you should be able to keep them on, on side, which is always good. Excellent. Okay, um, pan and tilt, uh, our actual range on those is 540 and 240 yep. degrees respectively. Certainly. Now there's, in terms of the actual motors that do this, they're, they're, they're quite big. They are. They're three-phase motors? They are. And they're the same uh, pan and tilt motors that are used in the VL3000 range. And the VL3000s are the very large, uh, full-size, I suppose, stadium lights or large concert event lights. Mm. So they're, I mean, whereas this is a, around about a 20 or 22 kilogram fixture, the uh, VL3500s are in excess of 30 kilos each. Mm. So when you're putting the more powerful pan and tilt motors from those fixtures into a guy like this, what you're getting is some pretty nimble movement. Yeah, okay. So the, the actual pan and tilt's quite, quite fast. Yeah. Um, in terms of its ability to start and stop and just fling the head around generally. Um, and yet it's still fairly quiet. Yep. You can run it in a few different modes as far as quietness goes. Yep. So I suppose the most important thing with LEDs and heat management is getting the heat away from the diode. So you've got fans on the back, one for each of these uh, chipsets. Yep. So I suppose the issue with fan noise, often with fixtures, is, well, first of all, you know, you, you might be working in a recital hall or you might be doing something where there's where, where, where sounds an issue like live theatre or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got three different fan modes. Yep. Uh, if you're working in, say, rock and roll or a loud production, you probably run it in uh, an on-demand fan system. So the more light coming out the front, the more fan is working. Yep. The more the fan is working. Yep. Um, or you can run it in a constant high level fan mode because it's not really going to matter. You've got a lot of other noise in it going on anyway. Or if we were going into a studio, there's a constant quiet mode as well. We could put it in. There is indeed. So it's, if, on the other side of things, if you if you're working in a place where there's perhaps a lot of condenser microphones, or, you, or you, you're in a recital hall, or you're doing all that sort or of thing, you just got a farm of moving lights, and or you if don't you've want got them to be too loud. Yeah, if you've got a heap of these things. Run in a quiet mode, which is a constant low fan noise. Um, you sacrifice a tiny bit of output, maybe about ten percent output, but you've got a lot of grunt in these things anyway. So in that context, that should be um, should be pretty acceptable. I would have thought. Okay. Now, also in terms of that uh, studio mode, if you're if you're running in a studio, 
Um, a common problem we see a lot is uh, LED flicker and indeed mm -hmm. if you look you can probably see the ones behind me are flickering, this one isn't. So that's, uh, that's yeah. a nice little feature there for, for yeah. TV users as well. It's been really, these have been really popular in TV broadcast, a lot of the um, recent oh, large talent shows in Australia, of which we're all pretty familiar, use a lot of the uh, VLX, which is the big brother to the Skype. So they're very much intended for, for broadcast use and, rel and looking reliable on camera. Mm. Yeah, it's funny we've sort of got that convergence going on between broadcast and live and the overlap of technologies is, sure. is getting larger. Mm. Okay, um, anything else we need to know or is that, that's pretty much it? Well, that's largely it. I'd encourage people to have a look at one and look at it alongside what they've conventionally used as far as washers go. Um, the v products like the, v well, the VLX range sits quite different from other moving light washers in that it's not like the uh, conventionals and you're not using a discharge lamp and you don't have all those, all those pieces in the optical train that you have to take care of and all that sort of stuff and maintain. So maintenance is low. But by the same token, it's not like the other LED moving lights as well, which most of them, a lot of people will be familiar with, the majority of them out there are like the small sort of moving, I call radar dish. Mm. And there's a lot of different brands that do it. Um, and they're, they're, they're fine lights, no, there's no question about that. The nice thing about a product like the VLX is it has a traditional form factor. So if you're seeing this amongst uh, a, an array of other moving lights... It integrates nicely visually. It does. Yeah, it, it, if you didn't know it was an LED, you wouldn't, you, wouldn't, know. You, you wouldn't necessarily have to know. It can mm. take its place alongside uh, tungsten moving lights, alongside discharge moving lights, alongside conventionals. Um, and because you've got such good colour matching, uh, it'll, it'll slip into that tungsten rig really nicely as well. Okay, excellent. Now, obviously, through jams, yep. um, rough pricing? Rough pricing's uh, list price on this guy is about 10450 bucks. Okay. Um, and obviously, a little bit more for the, um, the big brother. Excellent, so it's the Very Light VLX3.